a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. John F. Kennedy John Fitzgerald Kennedy, commonly referred to by his initials JFK was an American politician who served as the 35th President of the United States from January 1961 until his assassination in November 1963. He served at the height of the Cold War, and the majority of his presidency dealt with managing relations with the Soviet Union. As a member of the Democratic Party, Kennedy represented the state of Massachusetts in the United States House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate prior to becoming president. Kennedy was born in Brookline, Massachusetts, to Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. and Rose Kennedy. He graduated from Harvard University in 1940 and joined the U.S. Naval Reserve the following year. During World War II, he commanded a series of PT boats in the Pacific Theater and earned the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for his service. After the war, Kennedy represented the 11th Congressional District of Massachusetts in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1947 to 1953. He was subsequently elected to the U.S. Senate and served as the junior senator from Massachusetts from 1953 to 1960. While in the Senate, he published his book entitled Profiles in Courage, which won a Pulitzer Prize for biography. In the 1960 presidential election, Kennedy narrowly defeated Republican opponent Richard Nixon, who was the incumbent vice president. At age 43, he became the youngest man to be elected as U.S. president as well as being the first Roman Catholic to occupy that office. Kennedy's time in office was marked by high tensions with communist states in the Cold War. He increased the number of American military advisors in South Vietnam by a factor of 18 over President Dwight D. Eisenhower. In April 1961, he authorized a failed joint CIA attempt to overthrow the Cuban government of Fidel Castro in the Bay of Pigs invasion. He subsequently rejected Operation Northwood's plans by the Joint Chiefs of Staff to orchestrate false flag attacks on American soil in order to gain public approval for a war against Cuba. In October 1962, U.S. spy planes discovered that Soviet missile bases had been deployed in Cuba. The resulting period of tensions, termed the Cuban Missile Crisis, nearly resulted in the breakout of a global thermonuclear conflict. Domestically, Kennedy presided over the establishment of the Peace Corps and supported the civil rights movement, but he was largely unsuccessful in passing his new frontier domestic policies. On November 22, 1963, Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the state crime, but he was never prosecuted due to his murder by Jack Ruby two days later. Ruby was sentenced to death and died while the sentence was on appeal in 1967. Pursuant to the Presidential Succession Act, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in as president later that day. Both the FBI and the Warren Commission officially concluded that Oswald had acted alone in the assassination but various groups challenged the findings of the Warren Report and believed that Kennedy was the victim of a conspiracy. After Kennedy's death, Congress enacted many of his proposals, including the Civil Rights and the Revenue Acts of 1964. Kennedy continues to rank highly in historians' polls of U.S. presidents and with the general public. His average approval rating of 70% is the highest of any president in Gallup's history of systematically measuring job approval. Early Life and Education John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born on May 29, 1917, at 83 Beale Street in suburban Brookline, Massachusetts, to businessman-slash-politician Joseph Patrick Joe Kennedy and philanthropist-slash-socialite Rose Elizabeth Fitzgerald Kennedy. His paternal grandfather P.J. Kennedy was a member of the Massachusetts State Legislature. His maternal grandfather and namesake John F. Fitzgerald served as a U.S. congressman and was elected to two terms as mayor of Boston. All four of his grandparents were children of Irish immigrants. Kennedy had an elder brother, Joseph Jr., and seven younger siblings, Rosemary, Kathleen, Eunice, Patricia, Robert, Bobby, Jean, and Ted. Kennedy lived in Brookline for the first ten years of his life and attended the local St. Aidan's Church where he was baptized on June 19, 1917. He was educated at the Edward Devotion School in Brookline, 
the Noble and Greneflower School in nearby Dedham, Massachusetts, and the Dexter School through the fourth grade. His father's business had kept him away from the family for long stretches of time, and his ventures were concentrated on Wall Street and Hollywood. In September 1927, the family moved from Brookline to Riverdale, Bronx, New York. Young John attended the lower campus of Riverdale Country School, a private school for boys, from 5th to 7th grade. Two years later, the family moved to suburban Bronxville, New York, where Kennedy was a member of Boy Scout Troop 2 and attended St. Joseph's Church. The Kennedy family spent summers and early autumns at their home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts, and Christmas and Easter holidays at their winter retreat in Palm Beach, Florida, later purchased in 1933. In September 1930, Kennedy, then 13 years old, attended the Canterbury School in New Milford, Connecticut, for 8th grade. In April 1931, he had an appendectomy, after which he withdrew from Canterbury and recuperated at home. In September 1931, Kennedy attended Choate, a prestigious boarding school in Wallingford, Connecticut, for 9th through 12th grade. His older brother Joe Jr. had already been at Choate for two years and was a football player and leading student. He spent his first years at Choate in his older brother's shadow, and compensated with rebellious behavior that attracted a coterie. They carried out their most notorious stunt by exploding a toilet seat with a powerful firecracker. In the ensuing chapel assembly, the strict headmaster, George St. John, brandished the toilet seat and spoke of certain muckers, who would spit in our sea. The defiant Kennedy took the cue and named his group, the Muckers Club, which included roommate and lifelong friend Kirk Lemoyne, Lem, Billings. During his years at Choate, Kennedy was beset by health problems that culminated with his emergency hospitalization in 1934 at New Haven Hospital, where doctors thought he might have had leukemia. In June 1934, he was admitted to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The ultimate diagnosis there was colitis. Kennedy graduated from Choate in June of the following year, finishing 64th in a class of 112 students. He had been the business manager of the school yearbook and was voted the most likely to succeed. In September 1935, Kennedy made his first trip abroad when he traveled to London with his parents and his sister Kathleen. He intended to study under Harold Lasky at the London School of Economics, as his older brother had done. Ill health forced his return to the United States in October of that year, when he enrolled late and attended Princeton University, but had to leave after two months due to a gastrointestinal illness. He was then hospitalized for observation at Peter Bent Brigham Hospital in Boston. He convalesced further at the family winter home in Palm Beach, then spent the spring of 1936 working as a ranch hand on the 40,000-acre J6 cattle ranch outside Benson, Arizona. It is reported that ranchman Jack spied and worked both brothers very hard. In September 1936, Kennedy enrolled at Harvard College and his application essay stated, The reasons that I have for wishing to go to Harvard are several. I feel that Harvard can give me a better background and a better liberal education than any other university. I have always wanted to go there, as I have felt that it is not just another college, but as a university with something definite to offer. Then too, I would like to go to the same college as my father. To be a Harvard man is an enviable distinction, and one that I sincerely hope I shall attain. He produced that year's annual, Freshman Smoker, called by a reviewer, an elaborate entertainment, which included in its cast outstanding personalities of the radio, screen and sports world. He tried out for the football, golf, and swimming teams, and earned a spot on the varsity swimming team. Kennedy also sailed in the star class and won the 1936 Nantucket Sound Star Championship. In July 1937, Kennedy sailed to France, taking his convertible, and spent 10 weeks driving through Europe with Billings. In June 1938, Kennedy sailed overseas with his father and older brother to work at the American Embassy in London where his father was President Franklin D. Roosevelt's U.S. Ambassador to the Court of St. James's. In 1939, Kennedy toured Europe, the Soviet Union, the Balkans, and the Middle East in preparation for his Harvard Senior Honors thesis. He then went to Czechoslovakia and Germany before returning to London on September 1, 1939. 
the day that Germany invaded Poland to mark the beginning of World War II. Two days later, the family was in the House of Commons for speeches endorsing the United Kingdom's declaration of war on Germany. Kennedy was sent as his father's representative to help with arrangements for American survivors of the SS Athenia before flying back to the U.S. from Foynes, Ireland, to Port Washington, New York, on his first transatlantic flight. When Kennedy was an upperclassman at Harvard, he began to take his studies more seriously and developed an interest in political philosophy. He made the dean's list in his junior year. In 1940, Kennedy completed his thesis, Appeasement in Munich, about British participation in the Munich Agreement. The thesis became a bestseller under the title Why England Slept. In addition to addressing Britain's failure to strengthen its military in the lead-up to World War II, the book also called for an Anglo-American alliance against the rising totalitarian powers. While Kennedy became increasingly supportive of U.S. intervention in World War II, his father's isolationist beliefs resulted in the latter's dismissal as ambassador to the United Kingdom, creating a split between the Kennedy and Roosevelt families. In 1940, Kennedy graduated cum laude from Harvard College with a Bachelor of Arts in Government, concentrating on international affairs. That fall, he enrolled at the Stanford Graduate School of Business and audited classes there. In early 1941, Kennedy left and helped his father write a memoir of his three years as an American ambassador. He then traveled throughout South America. His itinerary included Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. U.S. Navy Reserve 1941-1945 1940, Kennedy attempted to enter the Army's officer candidate school, but he was medically disqualified due to his chronic lower back problems. He exercised for months to straighten his back. On September 24, 1941, with the help of the director of the Office of Naval Intelligence who was the former naval attaché to Joseph Kennedy, Kennedy joined the United States Naval Reserve. He was commissioned an ensign on October 26, 1941, and joined the staff of the Office of Naval Intelligence in Washington, D.C. In January 1942, Kennedy was assigned to the Ernie Field Office at headquarters, 6th Naval District, in Charleston, South Carolina. He attended the Naval Reserve Officer Training School at Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois, from July 27 to September 27 and then voluntarily entered the Motor Torpedo Boat Squadron's Training Center in Melville, Rhode Island. On October 10, he was promoted to Lieutenant Junior Grade. In early November, Kennedy was still mourning the death of his close, childhood friend, Marine Corps Second Lieutenant George Hope Meade Jr., who had been killed in action at Guadalcanal that August and posthumously awarded the Navy Cross for his bravery. Accompanied by a female acquaintance from a wealthy Newport family, the couple had stopped in Middletown, Rhode Island at the cemetery where the decorated naval spy, Commander Hugo W. Cooler, USN, had been buried the previous year. Ambling around the plots near the tiny St. Columbus Chapel, Kennedy paused over Cooler's white granite cross grave marker and pondered his own mortality, hoping out loud that when his time came, he would not have to die without religion. But these things can't be faked, he added. There's no bluffing. Two decades later, Kennedy and Cooler's stepson, U.S. Senator Claiborne Pell had become good friends and political allies. Although they had been acquaintances since the mid-1930s during their salad days on the same Newport debutante party circuit, and when Pell had dated Kathleen Kennedy, Kennedy completed his training on December 2 and was assigned to Motor Torpedo Squadron 4. His first command was PT-101 from December 7, 1942, until February 23, 1943. It was a patrol torpedo boat used for training while Kennedy was an instructor at Melville. He then led three Huckins PT boats, PT-98, PT-99, and PT-101, which were being relocated from Mtbron 4 in Melville, Rhode Island, back to Jacksonville, Florida, and the new Mtbron 14. During the trip south, he was hospitalized briefly in Jacksonville after diving into the cold water to unfoul the propeller. Thereafter, Kennedy was assigned duty in Panama and later in the Pacific Theater, where he eventually commanded two more PT boats, commanding the PT-109. In April 1943, 
Kennedy was assigned to Motor Torpedo Squadron 2. On April 24, he took command of PT-109, which was based at the time on Tulagi Island in the Solomons. On the night of August 1, 2, PT-109 was on its 31st mission with a total of 14 other PTs ordered to block or repel four Japanese destroyers and float planes carrying food, supplies, and 900 Japanese soldiers to the Vila Plantation garrison on the southern tip of the Solomons Columbangara Island. Intelligence had been sent to Kennedy's base commander, Commander Thomas G. Warfield expecting the arrival of the large Japanese naval force that would pass on the evening of August 1. Of the 24 torpedoes fired that night by eight of the American PTs, not one hit the Japanese convoy. On that dark and moonless night, Kennedy spotted a Japanese destroyer heading north on its return from the base of Columbangara around 2 a.m. and attempted to turn to attack, when PT-109 was rammed suddenly at an angle and cut in half by the destroyer Amagiri, costing two PT-109 crew members their lives. Kennedy gathered around the wreckage his surviving ten crew members to vote on whether to fight or surrender. Kennedy stated, there's nothing in the book about a situation like this. A lot of you men have families and some of you have children. What do you want to do? I have nothing to lose. Shunning surrender, around 2 p.m. On August 2, the men swam towards Plum Pudding Island 3.5 miles southwest of the remains of the PT-109. Despite re-injuring his back in the collision, Kennedy towed a badly burned crewman through the water to the island with a life jacket strap clenched between his teeth. Kennedy made an additional two-mile swim the night of August 2, 1943 to Ferguson Passage to attempt to hail a passing American PT boat to expedite his crew's rescue and attempted to make the trip on a subsequent night, in a damaged canoe found on Nauru Island where he had swum with Ensign George Ross to look for food. On August 4, he and Lenny Tom assisted his injured and hungry crew on a demanding swim 3.75 miles southeast to Olazanar Island, which was visible to the crew from their desolate home on Plum Pudding Island. They swam against a strong current, and once again, Kennedy towed the badly burned motor machinist, Pappy, McMahon by his life vest. The somewhat larger rollers on our island had ripe coconut trees, but still no fresh water. On the following day, August 5, Kennedy and Ensign George Ross made the one-hour swim to Nauru Island, an additional distance of about southwest, in search of help and food. Kennedy and Ross found a small canoe, packages of crackers, candy, and a 50-gallon drum of drinkable water left by the Japanese, which Kennedy paddled another half-mile back to Olazana in the acquired canoe to provide his hungry crew. Lieutenant, Bud, Libino, a friend, and former tentmate of Kennedy's, rescued Kennedy and his crew on Olazana Island on August 8, 1943 aboard his ship. The PT-157, with the help of Coast Watcher Lieutenant Reginald Evans and several native Coast Watchers, particularly by Akugasa and Aroni Kamana, commanding the PT-59, taking only a month to recover. On September 1, 1943, Kennedy returned to duty and took command of the PT-59, first removing the torpedo tubes and depth charges and refitting her in one month into a heavily armed gunboat bristling with two large automatic 40 calories and 10 automatic 50 caliber guns. The plan was to attach one gunboat to each PT boat section to add gun range and power against barges and shore batteries which the 59 encountered on several occasions in mid-October through mid-November. On October 8, Kennedy was promoted to full lieutenant. On November 2, Kennedy's PT-59 took part with two other PTs in the successful rescue of 40-50 Marines. The 59 acted as a shield from shore fire and protected them as they escaped on two rescue landing craft at the base of the Warrior River at All Island, taking 10 Marines aboard and delivering them to safety. Under doctor's orders, Kennedy was relieved of his command of PT-59 on November 18 and sent to the hospital on Tulagi. From there he returned to the United States in early January 1944. After receiving treatment for his back injury, he was released from active duty in late 1944. Kennedy was hospitalized at the Chelsea Naval Hospital in Chelsea, Massachusetts from May to December 1944. On June 12,
he was presented the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for his heroic actions on August 1, 2, 1943, and the Purple Heart Medal for his back injury while on PT-109. Beginning in January 1945, Kennedy spent three more months recovering from his back injury at Castle Hot Springs, a resort and temporary military hospital in Arizona. After the war, Kennedy felt that the medal he had received for heroism was not a combat award and asked that he be reconsidered for the Silver Star Medal for which he had been recommended initially. His father also requested the Silver Star, which is awarded for gallantry in action, for his son. In 1950, the Department of the Navy offered Kennedy a Bronze Star Medal in recognition of his meritorious service, which he declined. Kennedy's two original medals are currently on display at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum. On August 12, 1944, Kennedy's older brother, Joe Jr., a Navy pilot, was killed while volunteering for a special and hazardous air mission. His explosive-laden plane blew up when the plane's bombs detonated prematurely while the aircraft was flying over the English Channel. On March 1, 1945, Kennedy retired from the Navy Reserve on physical disability and was honorably discharged with the full rank of lieutenant. When later asked how he became a war hero, Kennedy joked, it was easy, they cut my PT boat in half. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?